Sable coat transformed into a beautiful fur throw. So the sable fur was beautiful to work with. It was soft and supple and it was just a gorgeous fur. Here's the front and the back. Here's the collar area with the cute little button. We didn't use it in the project. The customer did want us to use the lining and the lining was absolutely beautiful. The embroideries were stunning. Here is her monogram, which was difficult to find because it was so dark. But because the customer is going to be using the lining, we definitely wanted to be careful when taking it apart. The lower bottom had a separate piece for the lining and I'm going to save that and then use that in the final piece. And here's the main part of the lining. Later on I'll have a whole separate thing on how I do the lining. So now I'm just marking out the center portion of the fur. making my hash marks all the way along so I will be able to make nice straight cuts. Really very important to keep a straight line because you want the whole fur to look like it's moving all in the same direction and having a nice straight line. Once I'm done with all the cutting, it's time to lay it out. So I lay out the pieces and I try to figure out what is going to look best. And obviously this looks like a big hodgepodge right here. Here I have all the little pieces that I'm going to be joining together to make the border. And I'm working on the fur machine. Sorry that it's blurry. Um, I'm piecing the short ends of the border. The border is going to be three and a half inches wide. And after I sew it, I take a special tool and I uh, flatten out the seam as best I can. And then once the seam is flattened, then I'll take the comb and I will comb out any of the loose hairs. Sometimes there's a little over uh, hang of fur, so I'll just cut that off. Once all the pieces are put together, then I try to figure out what the best way to put my borders on. So my back is done, and now I'm just going to be adding the borders. And before I do that, I want to make sure that all the hairs are moving in the same direction so they're all going down so I'm going to double check that. Now I have to decide do I want the hairs going in the same direction or do I want it to look like it's continuing in the same direction all around or do I want it to have or have one side facing down or facing up that's really just aesthetics. My borders are three and a half inches wide and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pin the top and the bottom and I'm going to stretch it out because this has already been stretched out the top and I'm just going to place a pin here to tack it into place in here a 
pin here. All along the edge, making sure that the corners are taut. And I'm going to have a little bit of an overhang, which is perfectly fine because I'm going to cut that off when I go to sew it. So now I have my border in place. And to make sure that I am going to be sewing this properly, I have to make sure that the bottom is also going in line with the direction of the fur. And I already know that it is because I have made arrow marks throughout the fur top showing me the direction that the hair is moving in. So I know that this hair, just by looking at it, is going in the downward motion, which is what I want. And to make sure that when I sew it, I'm going to be sewing it evenly across the whole bottom and border. So I'm going to take a straight ruler or a line, whatever piece of wood, and I'm going to make some hash marks along the way. And those are the spots that I am going to mark or sew first when I put it on the machine. So I'm gonna put some tacking stitches down on these marks first in order to keep proper spacing. Because when I go to sew it on the fur machine, one wheel has the tendency, at least on my machine, to stretch out the fur a little bit. So I have to be aware of that. Now I'm going to take those borders and I'm going to do those tacking stitches just along, not the whole edge, but just along where I made the marks. And then once all those are done, then I go and do the whole line, which I'm going to do right now. Here it's really important to make sure that my edges are very even because if I have just a little bit that's a little too high, it's going to break a needle. Once the borders are attached, I then take the final picture of the top. Now it's going to have to be stretched out again and then I start to work on the backing. Now like I said earlier the backing is really important. It is beautiful and I wanted to maintain the most amount of the embroideries that I could. So what I ended up doing was I deconstructed the center and the sides and I cut them all out. I had to remove the inner lining as well uh, because that's not going to be part of the final product. The sleeves were not, I couldn't use the sleeve portion because it was a much darker color than the rest of the lining. Once that's all done, I'm going to iron it out. Try to get rid of any crease along the way. This is one of the side pieces. And I'm using a steam iron. Then I take my lightweight interfacing and I put it on the back of the lining. And I use 
a piece of muslin between the interfacing and my iron. I don't want my iron to get all sticky. And the reason why I put the interfacing on there is it helps to stabilize the fabric. And not only that, but it makes it look really straight and flat and crisp. Also makes it much easier to sew together when I sew the side pieces together. Here I'm just removing the excess. It's really not usable. And I am going to make a straight line where the top starts to taper in. I'm not going to be using that part. So I'm going to cut that off. I'm going to do the same for the side pieces as well. And once that's done, I am going to match up the pieces together, pin it in place, and I'm going to try to make it look like one long cohesive piece of fabric. I do that for both sides. Bring it to the sewing machine and sew at the seams. Now I'm going to even it out. And this is what it looked like when it was done. Now that the top is done, I am going to embellish the top with the batting or the, the batting that's underneath it. And I picked a really pretty floral design to complement the whole backing. And here's some close-ups of the design that I chose. And there's the monogram. Again, it's lovely on the front as well as the back. It's just a beautiful throw. And there's a pretty picture of the design that I chose. Come visit us at DynastQuilts.com.